Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can integrate Kafka with Snowflake. Okay, that is suppose you are getting a requirement like this. That is as soon as some messages are coming in a particular Kafka topic, it should be basically saved in a particular Snowflake table in our cloud data warehouse. Okay, if that is the requirement, how you can set up and configure your data pipeline. That's what I am going to offer. Okay. So before moving ahead with this particular discussion, I will request you to go through the, my previous videos where I have explained the installation of Kafka in Windows machine and how to basically play with Python and Kafka. Okay, the prerequisite links I'll be providing in the description box. Those concepts will surely help you to understand this video. Okay, so without any further delay, let's start. So already in my previous video, I have discussed these things, how to download and configure the log locations and then zookeeper properties, how to configure server properties, how to configure already covered. So to start the zookeeper, we use this particular code. So let me just uh, start the zookeeper. So I will go to PyCharm and I will paste the zookeeper code and I will start the server. So here you can see binding to port this one. So zookeeper is started. I will open a new terminal and I will start my Kafka server. Okay. So here our Kafka server is also started, right? And then what I will do, I will just create a new topic. Okay. So the topic name is suppose hello world one, two, three. I will just paste this and hit enter. So here it is already existing, that's fine. So I will be maybe changing the name to hello world one, two, three, four, something like this sort. And I will paste this and hit enter. So here the topic is created. Okay. Now the producer can publish the messages in this particular topic and consumer can consume. Okay. So already I have discussed the producer code which we have written in Python in our previous video. I'll just change the topic name here and rest of the code I'll keep as it is. So it is acting like our producer and for the consumer, uh, the code is basically will be using the console. This is our topic. So the topic name I will be just changing and this becomes our consumer. Okay. So what I will do, I will run our producer. But before that, let me start the consumer first. So here our consumer is started and I will just run the main function which is basically producer. So here see producer has produced message 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. And consumer is eventually consuming this in real time okay so this is perfectly fine what we have already seen our previous video also right so I will just uh, stop this particular code execution and I will come out of this particular consumer also right so consumer is closed and now with this recap let's directly jump into our new discussion that is how to configure Kafka Snowflake connection okay so as a first step what you have to do you have to basically download this particular jar file so just I will go to this particular link which I'll be sharing in the description box or in the comment section and we have to download this particular jar okay depending on internet speed it is going to take some time so we have to wait little bit okay and till then what we will do once the jar is downloaded we will put the jar in libs folder okay where is this libs folder so if you recall in our previous video we got this particular folder where all our kafka related codes are stored right so if i go there here you will see libs folder inside libs folder lot of jars are there so that kafka snowflake jar we have to put that here right that is the next step what we will do okay and then here what we have to do once we put that we have to update the plugin dot path in the kafka connect standalone properties okay that we can anyway do now also. So let me just show you. So if you go to configure, here you will see that Kafka connect standalone properties. So currently we are doing POC. So standalone mode only we are going to run. So I will just open in Notepad plus plus. So this is the code. If you just go a little bit below, here you will see plugin path. Okay. In plugin path, you have to basically put if you are like taking some additional jars, then where those are stored, that you can configure. Okay. So the Snowflake Kafka jar will be basically storing in our leaf folder, right? So I will be just taking the plugin path here. So I will go to leaves folder and I will just take the complete path here, not the relative one. 
and then here I will just configure it properly. Okay, right. So plugin path is configured. I just save this one and here I can close this one, right? So our standalone properties is basically configured. Now the next step is basically we have to create public and private key. Okay, so we will do that. So for that we are going to use OpenSSL. Now OpenSSL if you are working with Windows, it is directly not available. So to do these two steps, what you can do, you can basically launch an EC2 instance and perform this step. Okay, so I will go to EC2 instance and I will launch a Linux instance to do those two steps. Okay, so here I will go to instance, launch instance. And then I will select this one. T2 micro is fine, just I want to execute two port. And here I will launch the instance. So it is going to take some time again. So here currently our EC2 instance is running. I will just take the public DNS and here I will open put T. Okay. I just paste this one. I will go to SSH authentication. I will just take the PPK file what we have already downloaded. I will just open this one. Okay. Yes. And login as EC2 hyphen user. Right. So once that is done, here we have entered in the EC2 console. And then we are going to create the private key and public key for Snowflake. This concept also I have already discussed in my previous video. I will be sharing my previous video link where I have explained the public private key pair generation for snowflake in the description box okay so you can refer that so here what we are doing we are generating the private key first without any password okay so that is fine if you are going to production then you can basically configure the private key with password not a problem and then here I will just create the public key corresponding to the private key what we have created okay so it is done so now if I do ls here you will see the private key and the public key is present right now let's see the next step what it is written configure the public key in snowflake okay so we will just do cat and then here i will just take the public key okay so this is my public key now i will go to snowflake and configure that so here in snowflake what i am doing for this discussion i am basically creating a database ramu so for that first i am dropping that and then here i am creating and then here in my user id i am basically adding configuring that public key okay so here i will just take the public key and here i will go to snowflake i will configure this one, okay so that is done now to check whether basically it is configured properly or not here you can describe the user so if you observe the describe user sotodru command output here you will see the rsa public key output and this is basically the same public key what just now we have configured okay so that means this part is done right now what is the next step let's see so we have uh, configured the public key and we have verified also that whether public key is properly configured or not now we have to basically create a sf connect dot properties file okay this properties file is important to set up the connection in between snowflake and kafka and this is the configuration for snowflake standalone mode okay i will just discuss the important uh, properties and rest obviously you can explore from the documentation okay so i will open a new notepad and i will paste this one okay so connector class is basically we have to put this one only this is not in our hand task max no need to consider much topic so basically here we have to put that particular topic name where if the message is getting published it should be flown to snowflake okay so the topic name i can provide as demo yt kafka snowflake okay right now here snowflake topic to table mapping okay so basically now here in this particular properties you have to mention if any message is getting published in a particular topic in which snowflake table it should be ingested okay so like here i want if any message is published in this particular topic so i'll first give the topic name colon the snowflake table name will be fake data real time demo okay this should be my snowflake table name okay right simple now here three important properties are there buffer count records buffer flush time and buffer size bytes okay 
so the, based on this basically from kafka in snowflake the message will be ingested okay so what it is saying that if in the topic the count of records is 10000 or maybe 60 second interval is over or maybe this much byte is accumulated then the kafka will flush the data from the topic to snowflake okay whatever happens first based on that it will be flushing the data from kafka topic to snowflake okay so you can play with these kind of configurations now snowflake url name so here we have to put the url i will just take my snowflake url and copy that and i will paste basically here okay perfect and the next step snowflake username what is snowflake username i will just put my username and then snowflake private key so here in ec2 we have configured the private key right that is basically this one so let's see the content of private key that one we have to put in that particular property so just ignore the begin rsa private key and end rsa private key and in the middle part whatever they are just take as it is i have taken that and i will just paste that here okay and you have to make sure that it is coming in a single line so if it is coming in multi line you can give this kind of slash in every line okay let me just provide that So till second last line we have to put this kind of characters which we have already configured now snowflake database name so in which database our table will be present in that table we will be basically ingesting data in real time so the database is ramu database what we have created right so that is done now what is the schema name i am not creating any explicit schema rather i am basically going to use the default schema which is public okay right and then key conversion value conversion that is fine and then the name okay basically uh, the kafka connector will basically create an intermediate stage using which it will basically ingest the data so you can provide any name i can maybe put demo yt intermediate something like that sort okay and our configuration is almost done so what we will do we have to save this particular file and this file name should be sf underscore connect dot properties and we will basically save this in our properties section where all the properties are stored in the config location right see here zookeeper properties server properties which we already used in our previous video here only i will just save the new properties whatever we have created for snowflake connection okay so in the config directory sf connect dot properties is the file name here we have saved this one okay looks good so here it is configured i will just close that one so let me just show you that file what i will do i will just open this file in pycharm once to show you sf connector properties because in pycharm in proper coloring sometimes it is visible properly so here you can see that this is our basically config file and be very careful in while creating this particular file because if you do little wrong then your code will not work okay this topic is not existing in our kafka cluster so we have to create that that one we have to do and this table okay if you see we have basically configured such that the data will be ingested in this particular table fake data real time demo okay in the public schema in the ramu database so currently in the ramu database in public schema if i refresh nothing is there right the kafka snowflake connector will create that particular table and then only it will ingest so we no need to worry about that okay perfect now what we will do we will basically start the next process but before that we have to put the jar file in the proper location still few uh, more amount of download is remaining so let it download completely and then we will put the jar file in the lib location and then we will start our next process okay so basically in the next step we have to start our zookeeper server which is already running if you see in our terminal if i go to local here our zookeeper is running even if you check in our previous video we have configured the log location right so zookeeper logs are coming here as you can see and the server logs okay what broker is running so that server logs are basically getting accumulated here okay right i hope you are getting which we already co configured in our previous video that one only happening 
no need to start this Ukip again because it is already running. No need to start this server again because it is already running. Just we need to create a topic. Okay. So in our case, what topic name we have given? Let me just confirm once. Okay, it is already open in this place, right? So the topic name is demo YT Kafka Snowflake. Okay. So I will just take the topic name and here I will create the topic. So I'll paste this one. So this is our topic name. Okay, right. So let's just create the topic. So here I am using Kafka topic bat file to create the topic which is having the name demo yt Kafka snowflake and I will hit enter. Okay. So here you can see the topic is created. Okay, right. Perfect. Up to this nothing is there. Now in the main file, I will just change the topic name so that it will ensure that this producer code will produce messages and publish in this particular topic and then we will see that produce data whether it is reaching to snowflake table or not okay right so here you can see our jar file is downloaded successfully i can go to download section and here is my jar i will just copy that i will go to f drive and here i'll go to kafka i'll go to leaves and here i will paste that one. okay so snowflake kafka connector 1.5.0 is basically present in our lib location so with this we are all set with our configuration okay now next step if our kafka, zookeeper is running our kafka server is running our topic is created what we will do we will just run our python code and what this python code will do this python code will basically publish the message in this particular topic okay right so here let's just run this particular main function and here you can see the message is started getting published in our that particular topic now what we have to do we have to start the kafka connector for snowflake okay and this is the code we are having a bat file which is having the name connect standalone dot bat this bat file will basically set up the connection in between kafka and snowflake and then here we are sharing the configuration for kafka connect standalone property so here we are basically doing poc so it is standalone cluster so we are using Kafka standalone properties and even in standalone properties we did a very important configuration and that is basically this particular plugin path we have set it which will basically indicate that extra required jars you can take from this particular location and apart from that we are specifying the SSF connect properties complete path also so that it can take the important snowflake configuration from there simple right now what we will do we will just go to terminal and or maybe let here the uh, producer code run i will just uh, start our kafka connect for snowflake in the command prompt okay and i will hit enter okay let's see it is going to take some time so here you can see loading the packages all these messages are coming and here it is showing that some issue occurred snowflake private key must be a valid pem rsa private key okay so here some private rsa key file issue appeared let's see i think uh, snowflake private key it is not consent properly let me just check once let me take from this location and then here let me just uh, paste this one here once snowflake private key and i will just put the path here uh, sorry i have to basically give this slash not that one sorry for that so i will just uh, configure add this one in every line So here snowflake private key is configured properly. Now let's see. I hope it will work. So just uh, let's just try to connect Kafka connector again. So 
So here you can see the Kafka connect started. If you just configure properly, you should see this particular message. Okay. Now here in this snowflake, here you can see in public schema, nothing was present. Soon we should see the table getting created. Okay. And the table name should be what? The table name should be basically fake data real time game. Okay. So here our producer is continuously producing messages and publishing in the Kafka topic. So this table should be getting created here. Let's see. So it is going to take some time. So here you can see the table is created. So if I just do select star from this one. So here currently zero rows are there. So just wait a little bit. So here you can see that here pipe is also there. That means basically it is working based on snow pipe in the back end. So snow pipe is also working. So 504, 505 records are there. So let's just see whether it is ingested properly or not. So here you can see that 524 records got ingested. It is 523. So here 575. So next batch will run in the next iteration. So just uh, I can make a note. Already 524 records are there. So you can see the maximum number is 523 now. So this is basically record count. What record is getting ingested in our Kafka topic? That's exact record is coming here and if you check the first column it is basically storing the metadata the topic name partition offset and all these stuffs okay and here all the logs are getting printed that also so here you can see right so currently in our this particular producer 617 like that messages are getting published depending on flash time or byte size or count it will basically make its next flush from the topic to our snowflake for ingestion so in the currently it is 524 soon we will see that it will increase so just wait for a couple of seconds so here you can see now the count is changed to 668 okay i will show you the maximum value so here if I go a little low, here you will see the number is 667, that is more records got ingested, okay. Like that it will be keep on going and ingesting more and more records, I will show you one more iteration. So currently there are total 668 records, soon you will see in the next flash, more records will be ingested from Kafka topic to our this snowflake and we will see that the count is increased, right. So this is how basically you can integrate Kafka with Snowflake. The main component is Snowflake properties file and the chart file what we have downloaded. Okay. And all these steps, all the codes, all the commands, whatever I have executed, I will be putting in the description box or in the comment section so that you can also uh, play with it. Okay. We no need that EC2 instance mode. So I will just uh, terminate this EC2 instance. Okay. So it is done unnecessarily no need to enable any cloud platform and also remember one thing that is here what we are doing directly ingestion from kafka to snowflake using kafka snowflake connector here actually in the backend snowpipe is used right and snowpipe is one of the most expensive service from snowflake so you can opt for some other option also if it is possible like putting the data in s3 and then executing the copy command using some other mechanism or using some uh, etl tool if you want to load that is also fine okay because this is quite expensive process because it is going to use snowpipe in the back end okay so anyway our last count we have seen 668 the number started from 0 and maximum was 667 if I just make one more select star, here you will see 788, okay, the count is increased, okay. If I go to completely lower part, here you will see the, now the maximum number is 787. Like that it will be keep on running, okay. So I will not run it much more time. So I will just first uh, stop my Kafka connect here. 
it and then here i will stop my producer also so producer is stopped okay and here i will stop my kafka server also and i will stop my zookeeper also so just poc purpose uh, if you are working that is fine or else if you are thinking for production deployment based on this process then just uh, discuss with your architect team uh, for the budget whatever it is going to consume okay right so i hope you enjoyed this particular video this is all what i wanted to cover related to kafka snowflake integration if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you haven't subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you